Welcome back. You're watching The Globe here on SABC News Channel, independent and impartial. I am Sipi Saul Magwitla. The Palestinian Authority has called for the formation of an international commission to investigate the alleged massacres committed by Israel in the Palestinian Tentura village in 1948. Now, the call came after reports in the Israeli uh, paper about the discovery of a mass grave in the village. It is believed. The grave contains remains of Palestinians killed by armed Israeli gangs when the modern state of Israel was formed. Palestinians say multiple massacres of Palestinians took place during the 1948 war in a bid to forcefully expel at least 750,000 Palestinians from their homes and land. Palestinians refer to the tragedy as the Nakba or catastrophe. The Palestinian Authority is appealing for a broad international campaign to bring justice to the Palestinian victims. Uh, it further calls for the punishment of all those in Israel who continues to conceal and cover up the ugliness of the alleged mass killings. According to Palestinian historians, the massacre of Tantura allegedly took place in May of 1948. Israeli media reports uh, have prompted the eye of Palestinians about what they believe to be ethnic cleansing. But many within Israel have claimed, or rather have denied, that the killings amount to ethnic cleansing. To speak a little bit more about this, University of Johannesburg Professor Farid Isak is a board member of the lobby group Africa for Palestine. He joins us now to speak about this developing story. Professor Isak, thank you so much for speaking to us. So just a bit of history and background. Um, this is not something that is often spoken about. When did this first come to light? Well, <laughs> the painful thing is that this event depends on what you mean by coming to light. Mm, I just but mean, uh, when was the earliest time it was written about? Yes, as early as 2001, in fact, the Israeli historian Ilan Pape had uh, spoken about this when a, a senior student of his, and at that time he was based at an Israeli university from which he was subsequently expelled. Uh, Ilan Pape had written about this 22 years ago already um, on, based on the research of this uh, student, uh, Adam Ras. And so it's nothing really new in some ways. And this is, of course, the second tragedy uh, other than the tragedy of the massacre itself that the stories of the massacred only get told when it gets narrated by those who are actually responsible for the massacre. And in this particular case, Israeli soldiers who are in their 80s and 90s, they have now confirmed that they were participants in this massacre and they drew attention to it. And it's the painful thing is, of course, that it is only by the, the perpetrators drawing attention to their crimes and it gets publicized uh, uh, in their state that the crimes actually get to see the light of day. But yes, this first uh, came to the attention of the world uh, in uh, 2001, um, but alas, there was no attention given to it. In the same way, I dare say, uh, that until today, I mean, any regular reader of the BBC or the New York Times or well, even The Guardian uh, would not have picked this up um, because it just ain't news. If it just happened um, to a particular uh, marginalized group or if it to darker skinned people. I mean, let's be frank, if this was something found in Europe, you know, even if it's 10 people, it would have made big news. But of course, uh, black lives do not matter. And I'm saying this tongue in cheek, nearly as much as uh, the lives of lighter skinned people. I understand that the article itself even brought about a, a, a libel suit because of how uh, bringing this to light was seen as an affront by, as you say, the perpetrators and those who support uh, their version of events. So let's go back to 1948, the significance of that year. What exactly happened in Tentura? 
Well, 1948, I mean, other than uh, the establishment of apartheid in South Africa, one of the other major things is, of course, the founding of the State of Israel. Um, um, and, yeah, I mean, it's not wanting to go into the details of that. But uh, uh, the bottom line is that there was a huge catastrophe that occurred for the Palestinian people, uh, regardless of the intentions of those who wanted to create uh, the state of Israel, and regardless of the immense suffering that um, the Jews experienced uh, as a result of the Nazi Holocaust in, uh, in Europe. The truth is that the Palestinians uh, had to pay the price for the large-scale entry uh, of uh, of uh, refugees uh, from Europe and the buying or the theft of their own lands, um, and this they encountered as the Nakba, uh, the great catastrophe. And one of the manifestations of this great catastrophe was this uh, massacres, uh, mass killings of people, um, and of course the ethnic cleansing of large um, parts of the Palestinian territory. So that was the narrative of, it's like, you know, uh, it's like uh, the Dutch people uh, or the French Huguenots, they found a refuge in uh, the Cape of Good Hope uh, from persecution by uh, others in uh, Europe. That is true. The French Huguenots did. but And then they found it, say, Stellenbosch, for example, on it. So the one is acknowledging the pain that the French Huguenots experience um, <clears throat> and uh, many Dutch people, poor... Do that. But the other is, do you acknowledge, you know, the price that black Africa uh, or southern Africa had to pay for that? And so um, the one man's um, meat is the other man's uh, poison, in the, quite literally in this case. And regrettably, a man in this case is defined as the colonist. And uh, the meat is simply the, 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 the flesh and the bones, painfully, uh, in the case of the uh, Tantura massacre, more, at least 200 uh, people who were killed at point blank. Um, <clears throat> they weren't running away from anything. They were just shot uh, after the village had already been secured by the uh, invading uh, Israeli forces. So that is largely the narrative, not just of uh, the Palestinians, but the narrative, I think, of colonialism uh, throughout the world. Mm. And as you say, that this was something that occurred when uh, villages that refused to surrender were reportedly forced to do so by uh, killing its civilians, women, children, men, also sometimes we hear thrown into uh, camps. Uh, this territory, can you confirm that this is now a recreational area for Israelis? Yes. <clears throat> yes. Well, firstly, the village had already surrendered. But the, <clears throat> the soldiers had insisted they knew where other arms were hidden. And because, you know, the village denied that they knew this, it was then that, um, that more than 200 uh, of the uh, civilians uh, inside the village, children, women, <clears throat> and elderly men, uh, that they were killed. And, um, <clears throat> okay, as one of the Israeli soldiers, Moshe Diamon, says, you know, we've been silent and obscured about this issue. It is forbidden to talk about this. And it could reveal, yes, this happened. What to do? This happened. So <clears throat> the village that was destroyed as a result of that um, and the site of the massacre is today, in fact, a, uh, a holiday resort, a coastal village um, <clears throat> uh, right on the coast of now what is known uh, as the state of Israel. It is the Door Coast Park Beach Resort. And so when somebody says, you know, this is what happened, what to do? This happened. It's like, you know, you don't kind of just wash yourself off the past like this because the truth is, in two ways, the past lives on. In this case, in the memory and trauma of the Palestinian people, but worse, in the sense that they are the victims of an ongoing kind of massacre. And just because it wasn't, it's not 200 in one go, but 10 a month or 10 a day, you know, it doesn't allow the world to turn a complete blind eye to this, I'm afraid. 
So, Professor Issa, tell us what is being sought here by calling for an international commission to investigate. Is the task force uh, going to look over testimony? Are they going to try and unearth new information? And will it be a task force of both Arab and Jewish, uh, including historians, forensic experts, and pathologists? I mean, look, I'll be upfront and say uh, the call for an international commission, whatever good intentions, it's a pretty lame, uh, it's a pretty lame inquest. It's a pretty lame call. Um, I think that um, <clears throat> academically research articles um, by historians, including, by the way, uh, the Israeli regime supporting historians, somebody like uh, Benny Morris, uh, who's long argued and has documented many of these massacres, um, let alone uh, people like Adam Raz, who's come, I mean, who's the major uh, producer behind the current uh, movie that's coming out and the uh, Haaret uh, disclosures. There's also been uh, Ilan Pape that I mentioned in the beginning. But a, a very well-recognized historian inside Israel, Benny Morris, for example, he has documented all of this already. And according to Benny Morris, the only problem that uh, the that the Israeli soldiers uh, this the only serious problem that they engaged in or that they overlooked was not to do a proper job um, of uh, of uh, eliminating the Palestinians as a significant factor in the population of Israel. So I don't really think what an international commission is going to bring to the table in this regard. Um, and of course, I mean, I don't care, quite frankly, if an international commission comprises of Jews and Arabs. And I think if there is an international commission, it must be one of historians and people that have some kind of commitment to seeing the truth uh, uncovered. And um, in this regard, I mean, there would be as many Jews, I think, as there would be people from any other these things who would be interested in this happening. I am not interested in the ethnic affiliation of who comprises such a commission or their religious, uh, uh, their religious affiliation. Uh, that's neither here nor there. Well, thank you so much for speaking to us. Really uh, do appreciate it, uh, Professor. And Professor Farid Isak uh, is uh, a board member of the lobby group uh, Africa for Palestine, speaking to us about that uh, a call for a probe into what happened in Tantura in 1948. And as he was speaking there, there is uh, a film out called Tantura by... Um, and saying it details the dark side of Israel's creation myth and it is by Alan Schwartz and it's apparently at a sundance. So